So you want to make a Minecraft server with plugins. Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do that. Now, I do want to mention that we're going to be making two servers in this video. One with our company, Simple Game Hosting, and one on your own computer. The reason for this is the one with Simple Game Hosting is super quick and easy to set up, and it's super easy to add plugins to as well. You don't really have to worry about downloading anything other than the plugins, and it's just kind of automatic, and that's what's great about it. You get the server set up automatically and adding plugins, super simple as well. The second server we're going to make in this video is one that is the majority of the video, probably something like 85-90% of this video. And that server is on your own computer. Another limitation with that server versus the simple game hosting server is the server you create on your own computer. It can only be used by your friends, your family, people you trust because it's on your own network, as well as the fact it's hosted on your own computer, meaning you need good hardware, and it's meant to be private because, like I said, it uses your own internet, and anyone who gets the IP address of that server can DDoS you, hit you offline, and figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. Whereas with the simple game hosting server, you don't have to worry about any of that. We take care of the hardware, we take care of the networking, we take care of everything. All you do is get your server, add plugins to it, as you want and anyone can play on it you can make it public or private that choice is up to you we've also got helpful live chat if you need assistance there as well speaking of let's go ahead and get the simple game hosting server started first off go to the first link in the description down below the breakdown that xyz slash simple to be taken here this is our home page this is where you can kind of get you know some information about what you're looking for now you can scroll down or you can click the get started button here to see pricing for a plugin server the four gigabyte server is probably your best bet you can go for a two gigabyte server but keep in mind it's just going to be one or two plugins and maybe one other person playing on the server. So in most cases, four gigabytes is going to be best. Once you click get started there, we'll go ahead and take you through the purchase process. The most important part of this when it comes to making a plugin server specifically is making sure that right here, instead of selecting vanilla, you select purper. Purper is what we're going to be using to add plugins. It's the server software that allows plugins to be added. You can also select your location here. We recommend selecting the one that is closest to you, whether that would be Europe, West Coast, or East Coast US. And we do have more data centers on the way soon. So maybe there's one closer to you in Dallas, for example. Now let's just go ahead and click continue and go through the purchase process. Once you're on this page, review everything, make sure everything looks good and click check out. Obviously, go ahead, purchase the server, and after the server's purchased, check your email. In your email, you will have this, which is the account created email. Now, we have some stuff kind of, you know, covered up here. That way you can't see my email and stuff like that. But once you're here, you just want to click set up account, and that will take you to our panel where you can go ahead, enter your username and password, and when you do that, you will land on this page. And this is where you will see your server. Specifically here, we are going to be managing this server right here. Now, if you didn't, for whatever reason earlier, select Purper as your server version, you can actually do that right now. Just go into versions here at the top, and then from this drop-down box, select Purper. Then you want to install whichever version you want. In this case, it's going to be the newest version, and click install. So that's another way to install it if you didn't do it in the purchase process, so no worries there. Once you do have Purper on your server, we can go ahead and start it. So just navigate back to the console tab here, and then click the start button. Let's see, you're going to start the server right on up with Purper installed and all of that. It's important that you start the server before you actually install plugins because otherwise you won't have plugins to put anywhere, right? Plugins just won't work because there won't be a plugins folder if you don't start your server like what we just did. Now at this point, we can go to file manager and then we will have this, the plugins folder. So go ahead and open that as well. This is where you want to install any plugins you want. I've already downloaded some plugins, but we do have a link in the description down below to this, which is 15 must have plugins for your server. And it covers everything from essentials to world edit, all of that stuff. And this we're actually going to be installing essentials and world edit. Nevertheless, once you have your plugins downloaded, it's super easy to add them to a simple game hosting server, just come over here and click upload in the plugins folder. When you click on upload, it's going to open up this, which is basically your computer's files. They're most likely going to be in your downloads folder. So navigate there in this case, and then just select the plugins you want to install, which for us is world edit and all of those essential plugins. Then they install, boom, upload to the server, and now just come back to the console page and click restart. When you do that, your server is going to restart and all of your plugins will be active. I won't waste your time going in game and testing them because we can actually see if the plugins are active once the server is started by simply just typing in plugins right here. So as you can see, everything is started up. We see done there. And if we type in plugins, we'll be able to see essentials, essentials chat, essentials spawn, and world edit. Spark comes with purper by default, by the way. So that's why that's listed there. So there you have it. That's how you can add plugins to your server with simple game hosting. We are less than five minutes into this video. The rest of this video is going to show you how to start a purper server on your own computer for free, port forward, everything you need to do to get your friends to join it. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, you're going to need to download purper. This is linked in the description down below. 
and it will take you here. We may have created a guide on our website for Purper by the time you're watching this video, and if that's the case, just scroll down and click the Download Purper button there to be taken to this page. From there, make sure you are selecting the 1.20.1 version, and then you want to download the most recent version here because it's going to be the most up-to-date by clicking on this little icon here on the left-hand side. When you do, Purper will begin downloading right away, and then we can minimize our browser. From there, we're going to be on our desktop, and on our desktop, let's go ahead and create a new folder. So right-click, create a new folder, and title it whatever you want. I'm going to name it Simple Game Hosting, because that is the easiest way to start a Purper -pur server. With that being said, let's go ahead and move that Purper -pur file we downloaded from our Downloads folder into here. So open up your Downloads folder, right like so, using the Start menu, and then just drag and drop Purper -pur from here on our desktop into the Simple Game Hosting folder that we created. You could have named this Minecraft server anything you want. Go ahead and open up that folder, and in here we'll have this, this per, per file. We want to rename it, so right click on it and click rename. By the way, if yours doesn't say .jar, that's okay. Whatever it selects, automatically just type in per, per and replace it. It's important that it's named this because we need a code from the description of this video that we're going to be using to start our server. So now let's go ahead, grab that, and use it to create a run file for this server. So let's go ahead and right click here in this server directory, create a new text document. You can leave this name to new text document and open it up. Then in the description of this video, you will have codes, specifically two codes, one that allows you to use two gigabytes of RAM and one that allows you to use four gigabytes of RAM for your server. Like I said, four gigabytes of RAM is recommended for a per per server. So let's go ahead and paste that in here. As you can see, it does say per per dot jar there. That's why it's so important we rename that file because if those don't match per per dot jar and per per or in per per dot jar, depending on if you have the dot jar there or not, if those don't match, this won't work. So you want to make sure that those are the same. Once you've got that, though, we can go ahead and click File, Save As, and then we want to save this as a file named run.bat, run.bat. The save type as should be all files, and then click Save. So just like that, we now have this run.bat file back here. This is what we can use to start our server. Now at this point, I can double click this. The server will try to start, but it will fail. Now, as long as you get some of these files in the background here, specifically, you will eventually get an eula.txt file. And as long as you get that, you're good to go. But in some cases, when you double click that run.bat file, this won't work, right? You won't even get to this point. You won't get any of these files and folders. It just kind of won't work. Well, in that case, you need to download Java 17. Java 17 is required for Minecraft servers. And of course, we have an in-depth guide in the description that goes over everything you need to know to get it up and running for Minecraft mods, servers. They both require it, and this will help you. You may also need to run the jar fix in some cases, and all this is going to do is link the jar files on your computer, like that per per dot jar file, back to Java. But first, make sure you get Java 17. That's the first step, and usually that fixes things for Minecraft servers. Nevertheless, we can go ahead and again double click that run.bat to get the eula.txt file. Open this file here with Notepad. And as long as you agree to the Minecraft EOLA, which we do, change this from EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Go ahead and click File, Save. And now, when we double-click our run.bat file here, guess what? The server's going to start, it's going to run, and you can join your server. You might be like, well, Nick, I thought you said at the beginning this would take forever. And it will take forever. That is assuming you want your friends to join it. Because right now, you can join this server, no problem. But for your friends to join, you're going to have to port forward. You're going to need your public IP, all of that stuff. It's a lot more complicated to get your friends onto this server. However, at this point, you can join the server. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to launch up Minecraft 1.20.1. And then once I'm in game, we'll join it. Just make sure everything's working. And I'll show you how you can join your server as well. So here we are. The server is started on the left. On the right, we have Minecraft. To join your server, simply click on multiplayer. You can add the server if you want, but you can also just click direct connection. Now in the server address bar here, go ahead and type in local host. That's how you're going to join your server. You're the only person that can join your server this way, but go ahead and click join server and you'll join in on the left hand side. This is just so you can test the server, make sure it's joinable by you. And if you wanted to just test some plugins locally before deploying to like a public server, this will allow you to do that. Like you can just go ahead, add the plugins, do everything that you need to do. However, what if you want your friends to be able to join this server? Well, you're going to need to port forward for that. So in order to do that, we should quit the server, close out of Minecraft, as well as stop our server over here by typing stop down here at the bottom. When you hit enter, it's going to go through everything and get the server stopped right like so. From there, we need to go ahead and open up the start menu and type in CMD, right like so. Open up command prompt, and then in command prompt, what we want to do is type IP C-O-N-F-I-G, IP config exactly like that, and hit enter. Now there's two things we need to get from here, our IPv4 address and our default gateway. 
I'm going to put these in Notepad. And they're actually, as you can see, already in Notepad, but we'll delete them just so we can uh, refine them here. First is our IPv4 address. It's right up here at the top. And for me, that's 192.168.1.2 right like so. For our default gateway, that's going to be found at the bottom or near the bottom. Sometimes it's not always at the bottom of the command prompt window here. And if you have two of these, by the way, if there's one on the first line that's like a bunch of numbers and letters and it's kind of confusing and much harder to type than one that would just numbers, look at the line under it because most likely there's one with just numbers there. There won't be anything on the left-hand side. That's the one you want. You want the one that's just numbers. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.1 right like so. So now that we've got these, we can go ahead and open up our browser. And in our browser, what we want to do is open up a brand new tab right like this. In this brand new tab, what we want to do is type in that default gateway we got earlier. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.1. It'll be whatever yours is. Type that in there, right where you would normally type in youtube.com, the breakdown of the XYZ, or simplegamehosting.com. Then go ahead and hit enter, and you get some sort of a login box. This is what mine looks like. Yours will probably look completely different, and that is okay. But what you want to do from here is log in. How do you log in? Well, you need your router's username and password. Unfortunately, this is different than like your Wi-Fi password, and we have an in-depth guide on how to find it. It goes over everything, and as you can see here, it gives you methods. Method 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I understand nobody wants to contact their ISP, and luckily, 99% of people who need to find their router password don't need to. They can find it by method 4, but it's resetting their password, and then they're good to go. So, nevertheless, that is how you can find your router's username and password. Go ahead and log in. I'm going to do exactly that. So, here we are. We have logged in to my router. This is what my router looks like. Yours is probably going to look completely different, and that's okay. Not only am I going to be giving you the common terms and locations of port forwarding in this video, we have an in-depth guide in the description, and specifically this video here at the top, that goes over how to port forward on all of the most popular routers out there today, from Netgear to Cisco to AT&T, Verizon. It's all covered in this video, and you should go check it out if you're curious about how to port forward on your router. Even if your specific router is not mentioned in that video, by the way, I would recommend watching it because routers are very similar to each other. And most likely there's a router in that video that's similar to you and you'll pick up where it could be in your router a lot easier. Nevertheless, for me, it is an advanced and then advanced again and then port forwarding slash port triggering. Now for you, it may be an advanced advanced like it was for me. It might be an administration. It might be in security. It could be an apps in gaming. It could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be in single port forwarding. Like I said, it could be in security and then port forwarding. It could be in a firewall setting, or it could just be in apps and gaming or gaming and apps or game forwarding. Tons of different locations, tons of different stuff that could be. But once you find port forwarding, and don't be afraid to click on your router and your router to find it, just don't save anything unless you're positive you're saving a port forward. Once you've found it, it'll be one of two things. You have to add a new port forward like I do, or you will have a big list of empty boxes. If that's the case, just start with the first one. I have to add a port forward though. Luckily from here, things are similar for most routers. The terms could be a little different, but you should have a similar amount of boxes. First is the service name. This is what the port forward's for. This is for a per per server with plugins because that's what we're making. For the protocol, this is going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. And it literally may be the word both. If for whatever reason you can't select both at the same time like I can, then you want to do TCP once and then UDP once, doing this twice in total with everything else the same for each protocol. Nevertheless, for the port, anything involving the word port, external port, inside port, outside port, first port, second port, doesn't matter what it is. You want to enter in 25565, right like so. So I have external port 25565. Internal port, that's going to be 25565. For the internal IP address, IP address or just local IP, this is going to be the IPv4 address that we got earlier here. So 192.168.1.2 in this case. Now you may also have a drop down list instead of the IP address. If that's the case, go ahead and select the computer that you're making the server on. That also works. 99% of the time, go ahead, you're good to click apply and save. Some of you might have an external public or outside IP listed in your port forward. Luckily, every person watching this video needs to get their external public IP because that's how their friends are going to join the server. So you can go to the description and go here. This is just gonna take your IP address and give it back to you. But it's important to note, 
This is the information people can get from your IP address, your region, your city, your latitude and longitude coordinates from your IP address. So you want to make sure this is kept private and only given to people you would invite over to your house. So let's go ahead and click to copy the IP address there. Just click on it. You don't have to highlight or anything. Just click. And by the way, you can only see 4.3 because that's for privacy reasons. You'll be able to see that later in Minecraft though. Two. If you did need this for your port forward, make sure to go back and do that and, and add it to the port forward. Otherwise, we can go ahead and minimize our browser here because we can join this server. To do that, what we want to do is start the server. So just come up here and start the server with run.bat, and then we want to launch up Minecraft. Now, you may not be able to join your server via the public IP, and that's perfectly fine, because you can always join with that local host IP. The only people that have to join with the public IP are your friends. So if they can't join, it's probably an issue with either the port forward, entering a number wrong or something like that, it's super easy to do, or it is a Windows Defender firewall blocking it. And luckily in the description, we do have a guide on how to fix that. Nonetheless, we can go ahead and click play and go ahead and join this server. After we've joined it, confirmed we can join via our public IP, we can add some plugins to it. So here we are, Minecraft is open. We can click on multiplayer and we can direct connect again. We can then go ahead and paste in our public IP. Again, you can only see the last two digits and then click join server. We'll join in on the left hand side here, but there will be some other information blurred out, blacked out as well, because again, you can see your IP address over there and it's important that we don't give that out to everybody. But as you can see, we can run around here. We are looking good. Things are awesome. This server is up and running. It's the same server we were on earlier and we can join via the public IP. Again, if you can't, that's fine. Just make sure your friends can. And if they can't, it's probably Windows Defender. But how do you add plugins to this server? Well, let's go ahead and stop it first. So we'll close out of Minecraft. We'll also come over here and type stop right like so and hit enter to close out of the server properly. From there, we can press any key to continue. And now we can add plugins. To do that, you'll want to download some plugins. So we have this list in the description, which is 15 must have plugins for your Minecraft server. It goes over all of these amazing plugins that are kind of meant to work on every server. Some of them are targeted more towards survival like grief prevention. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and grab Essentials and World Guard like we installed earlier. Now, in World Guard here, we can click on File, and we want to make sure that we're downloading the 1.20.1 version, which we are, so we can just go ahead and click Download, right like so. For Essentials, we can go ahead and click on Essentials here. We were here earlier, as you know. Click on Download, right like so, and then we can download all of these that we want. Again, we do need to link about development builds here because it's not supported here, but it is supported in development builds, the newest version of Minecraft, 1.20 in this case. Now, in order to add these to your server, all you want to do is open up the server directory, go into the plugins folder, and then we want to move them into here. So the easiest way to do that is to come over here into our downloads folder. This is where everything's at. Click, drag them to your desktop, and then come back over into the plugins folder here in your server, and then just drag and drop them onto the server right like so. From there, we can start the server or restart it if it was running when you installed your plugins, just stop it and start it back up. And then we can join it. And then in game, we'll be able to see that sure enough, the plugins are working. So here we are, the server is started, Minecraft is open, we can join right on into it. And once we're in game, we can just type plugins or slash plugins in game, right like so, and we will be able to see our plugins. Now, if this didn't work for you, it's because you need to op yourself. So just come over here and type op and then your username, right like so, and you'll be made an operator and then you'll be able to run the plugins command. By default, every per per server has Spark. That's for like uh, figuring out if you have any lag and stuff. Otherwise, we have Essentials, Essentials Chat, Essential Spawn, and World Edit. If we wanted to do slash slash wand, we get the World Edit wand here and, you know, like uh, turn all of this grass into diamond blocks with replace because that's like my favorite thing to do. So we can do grass block, diamond block, boom, and there we go. All that is now replaced. And uh, obviously if we wanted to and just didn't like it at all, we could remove it. So there you have it. That is how you can go ahead and add plugins to your Minecraft server, get the correct kind of Minecraft server to add plugins to, and all of that stuff. If you do have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. We're more than happy to help you out. And be sure to check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple, to get your server up and running. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video, and I'm out. Peace.